guys, it's Stefan here on Gender for Your Chat. Um, just got a new computer, so hopefully this works alright. Um, so I have a little bit of catch-up to do. Um, a couple weeks ago, the question was, what is my relationship to my birth gender? Um, that's a little bit, well, a lot of it, I guess, complicated. Um, just... You know, growing up and stuff, I never really felt like a girl in terms of, like, what society says a girl should be. And so, for a long time, I just took that to be that I'm just not a typical girl. And that there's other ways, you know, that I can be while still being a girl, but... It, you know, turns out that I'm just happier in a not female body um and it's really hard to explain that to people because i can't just say you know oh well i always did boy things so i'm a boy because you know girls can do boy things too and what the hell is a boy thing so um i try to focus it a lot more on how i'm comfortable in my body so um you know just the whole not having breasts thing it puts me in a category of society that would be perceived as male. So, um, you know, as a feminist, I really wish that there was, um, more, you know, leeway given to boys and girls to, you know, be how they want to be within society and not, you know, have to... I don't know, conform to certain labels and and activities in order to be considered part of that. But, um, I also, you know, I mean, you, can just, you can't be what you're not. So, you know, um, uh, it's a really, really tough question. Um, the second question from last week is, um, whether it's harder being trans or being genderqueer. And, um, my answer to that would be, it's difficult either way, but in different ways. Um, it's hard being trans because you have to change a lot of stuff in your life. Um, and it's a very, very visible, um, change, um. In a lot of ways, um, it can be harder because, you know, if you, depending on how you go about it, uh, a lot of people change their names, change their pronouns, change their physical selves, and that's a lot for friends and family to wrap their heads around. And uh, you deal with, like, a lot of invalidation of your identity as well. And so it seems like you know, you're always, you know, it, it's a really hard road, but then once you are fully transitioned, whatever that means to you, um, you do have the opportunity to go about life fairly unnoticed, depending on, you know, what age you started transitioning at, and, you know, how well you adhere to traditional stereotypical gender roles of whatever gender you want to be perceived as. So, um, in some ways it's harder, in some ways it's easier, because you can just blend in if you want to afterwards, uh, if you're lucky. Um, but then, there's other ways that genderqueer is easier and harder. Um, being genderqueer is really difficult, because you're always in some sort of, like, a liminal phase, where, you know, some people he you, some people she you, and basically I'm going to be having to make gender decisions my entire life, and I'm okay with that. It's hard, but it's what I'm used to, if that makes any sense. Um, but in, for some genderqueer people, they, you know, accept their genderqueerness and don't necessarily change anything about themselves. They just realize that that's the label for them. So, in some ways, being genderqueer might be easier, 
um, because you you don't necessarily have to change your name or change your pronouns, although some people might. So, you know, it really just depends. And, I mean, it's just the label. No matter what you do or, like, who you are in life, you're always going to have challenges and successes and obstacles to overcome. So, I don't think it's really, um, like, a um, very important question, uh, whether, you know, what's harder. It's like, it's all hard, and we just need to be there for each other and stand up for each other and, um, and be a community. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, this week's question is about gender support groups. Um, uh, going to a gender group was really, really, really important to me when I was first coming out and first dealing with things because it just really helps to have uh, different opinions and different viewpoints and um, someone that you can relate to. Um, I found this especially important, you know, just being in the same community and talking to people. So, you know, the in-person support groups were really, really great to um, try to figure out, you know, where to go for resources, like how to, how to, you know, navigate the system and how to label myself and figure out who I want to be. And then eventually they turned into an example of who I don't want to be in a lot of ways. So that was uh, kind of sad, but then also very, very important because I realized that even though I identify as trans, I don't identify in a binary masculine gender role. So in some ways, you know, it was really important to get the resources about testosterone, about surgeries, etc. But then I, um, I also felt very distant once I realized that, you know, I still wanted to maintain my queer identity and a lot of other guys in the group did not. Or, or saw it in a different way. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, by then, I was comfortable enough in myself to know where, what I wanted to do and, like, who I wanted to be. And it was easier for me to branch out on my own after having that base in the group and um, that those friendships um, to get me where I wanted to be. And then, of course, YouTube. Um also helped me a lot in trying to figure out my non-binary gender identity. So uh, once I was in, you know, comfortable enough in my body to deal with the larger philosophical things, then it was a lot um, better for me to try to find groups on, on the internet that might feel more the same way I did about trying to fit into a different kind of gender role and that also being okay and um, trying to dispel a lot of the myths about, you know, what's good or bad for your body in terms of hormones or surgeries or whatever. So um, now I'm just kind of at a point where I, I don't know, I've almost sort of given up on trying to label myself and try to find somebody exactly like me because there's not going to be. Every single person is unique and every single person's, you know, gender story might seem similar to other people's, but there's always going to be some sort of nuance. Um, just looking at live journal communities, it's really funny because it's like, oh, trans and with, you know, Asperger syndrome or trans athletes or trans this, trans that. Like, there's so many offshoots that, um, you know, it's, it's going to be really, really hard to find somebody that's exactly like you, but you, you know, exactly. So... I mean, it's, it, I'm getting to the point where I have to realize that, you know, just because I'm friends with somebody doesn't mean they have to be like me, and it's better to have friends that aren't like me to um, try to, to nav navigate life with and see different viewpoints. So, yeah, um, I guess that's a lot, but hopefully it fits into the thing, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. All right, bye.